So we start with a beer can to make our beer can butterflies. The first thing we need to do is take the top and the bottom off. So I have a pointy pair of scissors that I'm gonna poke in and get a hole started. I like to use my kitchen shears, they're a little rougher, to cut it. And usually I recommend that you're wearing garden shear, garden gloves, but I forgot mine at home. So it's pretty rough to cut this top part off. It's not straight, but I don't want to lose too much of the can. So I'm just going to cut all these pointy things off. So we have that. I'm going to do the same thing down on the bottom. I'm going to go right at the edge this time and poke my hole in. Now, some people have wire cutters or metal cutters and things like that, snips, you can use those. So once I've got both parts cut off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down the middle. and I'm gonna trim off all these jagged parts. So I end up with a nice smooth edge to the can. Try to keep it under the camera, that would be helpful. So all these little sharp pieces you got to get rid of and make sure you don't cut yourself. Now I'm left with a piece that curls up. So what I want to do with that is I want to put it, use the edge of my table. So I'll just slide the camera over here a bit so we can see the edge of the table. And I'm going to, holding my hand, Go with the corner of the table, wrong side, put the label side down, and I'm going to pull all the way along, and you see how it reverses <clears throat> the curl, and now I'll go with this side, not as hard, just lightly, and I'll do that until my piece sits flat, so now it's a nice flat piece of metal. Now we're going to transfer our pattern on here. Now I've transferred my patterns onto the butterfly, onto the tin, and I'm using smaller scissors because it's easier to cut them accurately with the small scissors. If you don't, you can use big scissors. And then you're just going to cut out your butterfly shapes. And of course, when you come to a corner, it's easier to just cut back into that corner. into that corner and then I'll just trim his little head round but it gives me a place to come from so once I've trimmed and cut out my butterfly then we're gonna base coat them and when we base coat them that's when they become less dangerous um, you you want to trim off any sharp edges you might see, but when you base coat one side, then you base coat the other side. The paint grab <clears throat> the paint kind of grabs to the paint on the other side. We're using the metallic; it will adhere to anything, so we don't need any special sealer. So we're base coating them with our metallic paint. If you wanted to paint them with other paints, <clears throat> then you would need a sealer on them. I would I would spray them with a, a metal primer, and that would be perfect. All right. We'll go to our next step later.
we're going to do our technique that we want for our butterfly. I have taken and base coated both sides in berry metallic. Now metallic paint doesn't require a sealer. It's got a built-in sealer with it. I'm thinning down black to create a wash. I have rubbing alcohol and I have a mess over here with green. Don't look at that. I'm going to take and I'm going to add a coat. Whoops. I'm going to brush a coat of wash over top of my butterfly. There we go. Get a coat on there. So I'm kind of laying the brush on its side to get a nice coat on there so I'm not brushing it off. While it's wet, I take my fan brush and I'm going to just kind of tap over top with rubbing alcohol. So I've dipped the fan in rubbing alcohol. And as I spatter, do you see what happens? The rubbing alcohol is causing the paint to separate where the drops are. Now, if I have um, a place that I want another drop, I can just add another drop or two. And then if I happen to have too much gathering in an area, I just take a paper towel and I absorb the excess. I'll flip that over now, get a just a piece there, and I just sop up that puddling water. So I will set that guy aside, let him dry, flip him over, and do the same thing. So I'm going to take it's dried. I'm going to take some glorious gold and I'm taking it like a zero round. And I'm going to go around the outer edges. Now I do have a pattern that's in our, a line drawing that's in our pattern that you can transfer on and follow all the proper lines. But the whole thing with this butterfly is he is going to, <clears throat> pardon me, he is going to just be folded up and have such attraction to him, you're not going to be able to pay attention to whether or not. So I'm going to make a loop in the middle and I'll do another one here. So I'm just doing these almost like outlining commas. Nobody is going to even realize if the same pattern is on each wing. You can basically try to replicate that. So I'll continue the same thing with the bottom section. Whatever I do here, I relatively do the same over on the other side. Okay, so that's one side, and then I will continue it on the other side. So I've completed my butterfly with the gold lines, and I'm going to take my Duraclear High Gloss Varnish. It's a polyurethane varnish. It's good for indoors and outdoors, and the high gloss is super good for outdoors. I am going to put at least two coats both sides of my butterfly, front and back, and then we will show you how to apply the butterfly and create the bent wings. Here's the supplies that we're needing to attach our butterfly. I've got an eight inch piece of wire I'm going to take zoom. I'm going to take the needle nose pliers and give a little bend and twist on the end of the antennas. So I'll do it on both ends. Slide that out. 
piece of wire is bent or split, I guess the plastic coating that you have come off. So I'm just going to get rid of that, redo that end. Give them a nice little twist. So I'll fold my wire in half, like so. And then I'm going to give a little twist so that I have a loop. So now my antennas are ready. I'm taking my butterfly that I've done with all our techniques. This one's blue. I've switched up to blue. I'm going to put, I've got a little poker. A thumbtack will work as well. And I've got a folded towel under here for this little tool. Oops. So I'm creating three holes. And I'm going to take, and I'm just going to give a little twist to get this first screw in here. This is the guy that's going to hold my loop. So I want to know where he's going to be. <clears throat> Well, I'm going to slide that aside. I've got a small screwdriver, tiny half screwdriver. I'm going to position my butterfly where I want him to be. And I'm going to take my antenna. Now I'm going to slide it underneath and make sure that it's in that loop. And I'll take my screwdriver. And that loop is in there. It's in that wire. So I tighten that in. And I'm going to put in all of my screws, three little brass screws. You could get away with two. We don't want our little guy to get away on us. So we have these here. I can tug on this. It's not coming out. I'll now fold my wings up. So they're up. And then I just kind of take and, and give them a gentle bend around my finger. Just to curve the end of those wings. And you can press them down as much as you'd like. And then I'm going to take and give my antennas a little bit of a curl. So our butterfly is attached and on our birdhouse. And then I've got, I've already went ahead and attached this guy on the roof. I put my large butterfly up on the roof. And then I have the smaller butterfly on the front of the birdhouse. So that's how we attach our butterflies.